Hello viewers, this is Dr. K. Rajshekar from La Excellence IAS. In this video, we are going to talk about R21 vaccine, the new vaccine recently approved by World Health Organization. First of all, let us understand about what is malaria and why is it so important to bring a vaccine like this. Malaria is a well-known disease. It's actually an ancient disease known for a long time, caused by a parasite called Plasmodium. Plasmodium. And there are different species of Plasmodium. Specifically, we have something called Falciparum and Vivax are very well known to cause damage during the malarial process. Especially Falciparum is the most dangerous one, which is more common in Africa, whereas Vivax is more common in India. And these disease transmits through female anaphilis mosquitoes. So disease only transmits when a mosquito carries this pathogen, this you know, pa parasite from an infectious agent or infectious person to another person. That is the only means of transmission of this disease. So malaria mainly transmitted by mosquitoes. And if you look into the burden of it, as per 2021 estimations, there are 247 million cases, meaning 24 crores, you know, cases that we see globally killing 6.2 lakhs people. So more than 6 lakhs of people are dying from this disease every year. And biggest damage is seen in Sub-Saharan Africa, the region that is south to the Saharan desert. So all these countries that we see in Africa, like including Zimbabwe and we have Kenya, we have Nigeria, these kind of countries are mostly affected by this disease. And within India, especially India has highest burden in Southeast Asia. 80% of the cases that we see in India are we see in Southeast Asia are accounted from India. So definitely we also have higher burden. But one thing to remember here that we have fewer falciparum cases. Most of the cases that we see in India are Vivax cases, but still we have falciparum as one of the agent causing this problem in India as well. So let us learn a little bit more about this disease and where things actually have become too complicated for us. As I was mentioning to you, a person once gets infected with you know, a mosquito or bitten by an infected mosquito, this person gets the parasite into our body and this actually initially affects the liver cells, so starts multiplying liver cells and then RBCs, thereby causing the symptoms that we normally see like chills, fever, fortnight fever that we see is because of the life cycle that happens inside the RBC. Like that, it goes through multiple cycles here between mosquitoes and humans. So if this is a so well known disease and there's so much of damage that is already happening, why don't we have a good proven vaccine against it? Right? So there must be definitely several challenges to that. What are the major obstacles here? First of all, as I have shown you in the previous image, it has complex life cycle, which, ha which happens in mosquitoes as well as humans in different parts of humans with multiple stages. If you see in the image here, we notice that it is actually going through multiple stages within the mosquito and also in humans. Within humans, I was mentioning to you, liver cells as well as RBCs, red blood cells are affected in the process. And it goes through multiple stages. Generally, they call shijons, merozoites, tropozoites are the different stages that we notice. That is what makes it very difficult for scientists to identify the right antigen which activates immune system. That is the first part, first problem and the major problem, complex life cycle. Plus, when people get infected with malaria, second infection can happen again, meaning the protection from the previous infection is minimal. So natural infection is not able to provide protection from the second infection. Okay. Also, this parasite is known to have a very good you know, strategies for avoiding immune system to remember and also even escape from the immune system. So when there is no such system is taking place, how can a vaccine work? Because vaccine mimics the immune system function. If immune system itself is failing to remember and protect us, then what scientists can do to deal with this problem? So scientists actually have to imp create something that is even better than our immune system function in a way. Right? Okay. So in the process, we have seen in 2021, WHO has approved first malarial vaccine called RTSS. It is a technical name, but commercially it is called Maskirix. It is sold as Maskirix in the market, being approved by WHO in 2021, with the focus on Sub-Saharan Africa, where there is a major damage. 
okay and especially where there are more moderate to severe illnesses that found in uh, in these regions from malaria and this first vaccine was developed by GlaxoSmithKline after 30 years of effort they could actually reach this stage along with PATH. PATH is an American based non-profit global health organization together they have developed this and what kind of vaccine is this during COVID, you have probably learned about different kinds of vaccines, classical and modern vaccines. This is indeed a modern vaccine, which mainly depends on the protein, protein, pu purified protein complexes. So this is called recombinant protein vaccine. So purified protein in combination with other proteins are used here. And the focus here is falciparum because falciparum causes the most dangerous form of malaria. So they wanted to protect people from this. So it doesn't provide much protection against vivax, but it provides protection from the falciparum caused malaria. And it has been already launched in three African countries, Ghana, Malawi, Kenya after pilot project. And it has uh, substantially decreased the number of malaria you know, based deaths. That is what we have seen with the uh, first malarial vaccine. But why second malarial vaccine is needed? First of all, let's see what kind of vaccine is it and why is it important. So this vaccine is called R21 vaccine or commercially it is called a Matrix M vaccine. Mat Matrix M is a kind of adjuvant they call or a platform on which they have built it. So this is in a way very similar to the first vaccine or RTSS vaccine. But this vaccine is developed by University of Oxford and uh, the vaccine is being manufactured with the help of Serum Institute of India, Pune based Serum Institute of India that also has made Covishield vaccine in India for COVID. This is very similar as I mentioned, it's a recombinant protein vaccine, so effective against falciparum and it also known to show or decrease 75% of chances of getting the malaria. What does that mean? Generally it is referred to as efficacy, we call it efficacy. During COVID-19 time we heard these terms regularly, efficacy, efficiency. What is the difference between these two terms? Efficacy is normally what is being tested in the laboratory. In the laboratory, let's say, a few people have given uh, you know dummy vaccine we generally call okay so no vaccine just give they are given with water and other people have given the real vaccine and then if you see 75 percent of the protection can be seen that is called efficacy in the lab setup in the real world that real percentage would come down if it is 75 percent in the experimental scale indeed we have seen only 30 percent of protection or effectiveness we have seen in the real real life so in the lab scale it is similar to what rtss has done so same efficacy that we see, we expect it to have similar effectiveness as well. So it is being hoped that uh, by mid 2024, this will come into the market and people can start using it. Okay, technically, if you see a briefly that I would like to tell you how this vaccine is being made. For this vaccine, they have taken gene from plasmodium, so coding for a protein of plasmodium, but they combined interestingly this with Hepatitis B antigen, hepatitis B antigen. Combination of this has given rise to a recombinant protein. So what we are seeing here is a recombinant protein. Recombinant protein basically taken from the one particular stage of malaria. Okay, so this is what is able to provide the protection that we are seeing both for both of these vaccines. Then why second vaccine is important? The interesting facts here is uh, the demand for RTS vaccine is so much but supply is so limited it is not able to reach the demand of the public so we definitely need a second vaccine this is going to be an additional benefit it is going to fill that gap and also cost wise if you see RTSS vaccine costs roughly ten dollars per dose whereas this vaccine costs half of that less than even less than half of that two to four dollars and with the help of these two vaccines we can hope to eradicate the malaria from the world okay so from this in exam point of view what kind of questions can we see here most likely this is important for the prelims prelims part they can ask us you know in what context we heard about r21 in the news it is a malarial vaccine or they can ask a question on why making vaccine for malaria is such difficult which of the following are actually challenges in making a malarial vaccine so complex life cycle and also less protection from the real infection can be remembered here and then they can even ask about what, what kind of vaccine is this? Even if you're writing about biotechnology role in uh, dealing with uh, you know, infections, you can talk about how uh, with the long-term you know, research, we could come up with some efficient vaccines like RTS and R21 vaccines. Such examples also you can write in your mains answers. Okay, thank you.